In 2012, alongside the review of the Employment Act, tripartite partners agreed it was timely to review the IR Act to see how unions can play a role to better represent the needs of these PMEs. The amendments we are proposing today seek to build, build on these changes to further strengthen the channels of union representation for PMEs and provide them with a wider set of options for union representation. The first key amendment proposes to remove the legal barrier for rank and file unions to represent executives collectively. Our economy has evolved and the educational profile of our workforce has improved. It's changed quite dramatically and will continue to change. There's now a much wider variety of jobs, especially at the executive levels, from entry-level jobs to senior management roles. Recognising that rank and file unions have played an effective role to help rank and file members address their workplace issues, tripartite partners recommended to provide an additional option for executives, particularly the more junior ones, to join rank and file unions for collective representation if they wish. The second key amendment in this bill proposes to expand the scope of areas which the rank and file unions can represent executives on an individual basis, include matters relating to re-employment. So currently rank and file unions can represent executives on an individual basis in four limited areas. Specifically, firstly, breach of individual contract of employment, Secondly, retrenchment benefits. Thirdly, unfair dismissal. And fourthly, victimization. This provides executives with an additional and lower cost alternative to settle their employment disputes through union and management negotiations. While well, the tripartite partners have proposed extending the scope of collective representation of executives by rank and file unions there is still value in retaining the limited representation framework which I've just mentioned. To further broaden executives' options for workplace representation, tripartite partners have recommended expanding the scope of limited representation framework to include matters relating to re-employment after retirement. Mr. Deputy Speaker, we started this very important journey to provide greater scope for representation for executives as far back as 2002. We have, over the many years, built up a very strong tripartite partnership here in Singapore. And we do intend to keep to that. The basis upon which we have established that successful partnership, we intend to continue that. But the space is also evolving. The economy is evolving. The workforce certainly is evolving. And therefore, we need to find a new formulation that can continue on this trajectory. The legislative amendments that I propose will offer more options for union representation of executives at the workplace because we do have many more executives in the workplace today and it will continue. It will allow us to harness established channels under the IR Act for employers, executives and unions to engage in dialogue to resolve any industrial disputes. 